change the language to there's a little part of me that is sad. Notice our thoughts, our emotions and our stories for what they are. I can do something about it uh, as opposed to, oh, it's in me, it's part of me. They are feelings, they are not fact. So can you take us through some practical strategies? Like if someone is in the moment and they realize that there is a story that them, they're telling themselves, like how can we practically move through that? Because often it's when we're in the middle of it, we feel like we're floundering and it might not be yet yes. we're on the other side with hindsight we go oh okay that's why I did that but when we're in the middle of it how can we move through it with as much grace as possible so one of the first things that I will say is that often you know when we think about emotions people will say things like oh you know the emotion caught me off guard I realized that I shut down or I realized that I left the room when the conversation was difficult and it caught me off guard. But often what we can do when we um, open ourselves up both compassionately and curiously is you start to notice, you know, patterns. So you start to notice the pattern, for instance, that you've got the opportunity for learning and growth. Uh, but, you know, not to overly extend the example, but that your to-do list and your checklist and your need for order is something that you're focusing on every day. And that's actually now moving you to your checklist and it feels really safe, um, but it's not moving you out into the world, into things that are values connected for you. So the first thing that I would say is, if we can adopt a greater level of compassion and curiosity with ourselves, we can actually start noticing patterns, ways of being on autopilot that um, we maybe had been unaware of previously, or maybe we hadn't noticed uh, with a great level of acuity before. Uh, another, another thing that I think is really helpful is often when we are uh, stuck in a story or an emotion or a thought, I often think about, you know, it's very difficult to read the instructions when you're inside the bottle, you know, when you're inside the bottle and you're feeling fearful or you're stressed, um, it's, it's often very difficult to then be effective in that circumstance. And so a really helpful way when we're stuck is, to notice our thoughts, our emotions, and our stories for what they are. They are thoughts, emotions, and stories. They are feelings. They are not fact. So I'll give you an example of what I mean by this. Um, in emotional agility, I talk about this idea that we can often get hooked. And getting hooked is when, you know, you have a fight with your spouse, you shut down, you automatically go to your desk and do those particular things first. Um, you are stressed, so you bring your cell phone to the table. And these are things that are taking you away from living your life in a way that feels values concordant with you, with yourself. And, you know, I often think of the language of Viktor Frankl or, or the sentiment, actually, that Viktor Frankl expressed, this idea that between stimulus and response, there is a space. And in that space is our power to choose and it's in that choice that lies our growth and freedom. So when we hooked, there's no space between stimulus and response. I'm being undermined, so I shut down. Um, I'm stressed, and so I bring my phone to the table. Those examples. There's no space between stimulus and response. So what we're trying to do to be effective emotionally and with our stories and with our values and, in fact, be agile in our lives and healthy is to develop skills that help us to step out of those emotions so that there is space between stimulus and response so we can read the instructions on the bottle. So what is a strategy? Uh, one strategy is that very often people will describe themselves by their emotion. So here's what I mean. I am angry. Okay. It sounds normal. But what are we doing? We are literally defining ourselves. I am all of me 
percent of me is angry. You know, I am guilty. I am stressed. I am stressed. <laughs> I'm stressed, okay? I'm busy, so I'm busy. Doing, I'm busy. So what you're doing is you can see that just by the language that we are using here, there is no space for anything else, for wisdom, for compassion, intentionality, breathing, centeredness. You know, we are more than that one emotion Th- You know, we much more than that one experience that we're having. So one very simple strategy, and it sounds like a linguistic uh, hack, um, but it, and it is, it is, but it's extraordinarily powerful is, I am sad, I'm noticing that I'm feeling sad. I'm noticing that I'm feeling angry. I'm noticing that this is my, you know, I'm not cut out for this story. I'm noticing that this is my, I'm not good enough thought. What you're doing here is you're simply just noticing, you're not pushing them aside. You're noticing your thoughts, your emotions, and your stories for what they are. Thoughts, emotions, stories, feelings, not fact. When you do this, you're starting to own them rather than them owning you. So that's one strategy. I've got many others if that would be helpful, but, you know, let me know if that if that feels like it resonates. Oh, I love this so much because I used to say I am sad, I am busy, I am stressed. Then I worked with a therapist and he taught me to change the language to there's a little part of me that is sad, but I like this even more because it is, I'm noticing there's sadness or I'm noticing there's anger or I'm noticing there's loneliness. I like that so much more than even there's a little part of me that is sad or because that still makes it feel like it's it's part of me, it's in me where the noticing is the observer And it feels more empowering and like I can do something about it 